Doodle Bud, and today we're talking Parker 51 versus Lammy 2000. Boom! So I know what you're already thinking. You're thinking, Doodle Bud, you got this tiny little YouTube channel with barely 300 subscribers and a few videos. This is a pretty big review for you to do, but I'm going to do it anyways. So let's get started. So first category, which I know absolutely nothing about, which is history. So let's first talk about the Parker 51. Came in production, first year was 1941 and ran until 1972. Cool uh, options that came along during that time, one of which was the filling system changed in 1948 from the vacuumatic to what this is, which is the aerometric. And at one time this was deemed the world's most wanted pen had to do with supplies being used for the war versus consumer goods so it was actually kind of tough to get it's also been called the queen's pen as the queen's been noted to carry this with her all the time in her purse as well i'm not going to go anymore because there is tons and tons and tons of history on this pen which i'm not uh at all knowledgeable to fulfill so but there's the internet's full of information on that as well. There's a bunch of history on this, which, you know, to some people could be super interesting. Um, even like the nose cone, some say it came from the P-51 Mustang. It was reference to that. Uh, as cor Technically, I don't think it was supposed to be that, but uh, Parker kind of took advantage of that and said, yeah, sure, we, we recognize that it helped with the marketing. It had to do with 51 being uh, the company's 51 years uh, anniversary. They came up with that uh, name for the pen. With the Lamy 2000, this was in 1966 and is still in production today. Um, you know, I don't think there's as much history on it just because, I mean, there's way more history than that. Obviously, the designer, last name Braun, who designed, you might be familiar with some shavers and stuff like that. He did a brilliant design on this. I think it's fantastic. We'll get into aesthetics and design later. Um, but I don't think there's quite as much uh, in-depth uh, history or I know with these, there's all sorts of guides and what clip and what pen and what color came out when and the different jewels and all that, simply because there isn't a whole bunch of options. Uh, nothing's really changed much. There's been a few minor things like to do with the clip and there used to be an L on here at one point. But other than that, this thing has stayed the same and also it's still in production. So anytime something goes out of production, um, that's when you start really digging into the history. You can't get that thing anymore. So you want to learn more about it and things become more rare versus you know, I bought this brand new uh, just a couple years ago. So on history, I'd have to give it to the 51. Uh, I believe there's just so much more behind it as well. So that's the first category we're going to talk about. Next up is options with the pen. And I kind of gave it away in the previous one talking about the 51. There's just a lot more options from whether it's the filling system uh, to the different nibs that you could have. The Octavian, that's what this one is. This is the 51 Special, which is just... It's a steel alloy. That's all that means. It's a mix of metals. But, you know, marketing came along. They gave it a cool sounding name. You can have gold nibs on there as well. Lots of color options. Lots of cap options. Jewel options. Clips changed. There's way more that I, you know, do not know everything about these pens. But there's a lot more options on these. With this, not so much. The design really, again, has not changed. A few minor little things. But... Uh, first gen and this one, which is pretty darn new, don't look that different. There really hasn't been much uh, differences in the pens over the years. But as far as options, the color is pretty much always this, this black Macalon. There is a stainless steel, and I believe for a very short period, and they sold out instantly, there was a blue. Um, but this is pretty much the, the Lamy 2000 everyone knows, and some get the stainless steel one. But as far as options, this is the one area the Lamy uh, does better is a nib options. Um, they're all gold, 14k gold, but a uh, lot more nib widths available from extra fine up to, I know you can even do oblique, I can't remember if you can do double oblique broads, but a huge mix uh, of nib options for that. So I'm going to again have to give that to the 51 just because there's more options in different areas versus realistically for the Lamy, it's just the nib options, but that is a big one. When you're into fountain pen, uh, fountain pens, being able to choose the nib you want is a massive important option to you as well, but I still think the 51 ekes ahead on just there being more options for the pens. Let's touch on pricing next. Um, with the Lamy 2000, it's fairly consistent just because, well, this is still in productions. <laughs> so uh, the, chain, the price changes a little bit from real retailer to retailer. 
Um, but the price, unless you're getting, say, the stainless steel, is about the same, uh, plus or minus a little bit, no matter where you go. With the Parker 51, there's, it's going to be changing quite a bit. You can get a more of a lower end Parker 51 like this one for, again, Canadian dollars, 100, 120, or somewhere in that range, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, just depending on the condition of the pen, to several hundred dollars and even way more than that, depending on uh, the options, the, the color, if it's more rare and stuff like that as well, the age and just different little parts to do with the pen. So I don't know if there's a, a win or lose on that. And again, at the end of the day, they're both winning on this review. <laughs> both pens are great. Um, but just uh, that's more of a, just an area to keep you aware of. Uh, the pricing can vary more on the Parkers versus the Lammies. It's pretty consistent. Okay, next up is, uh, I guess, sort of serviceability and things like that when it comes to the pen. Uh, servicing and cleaning. So that's an important part when you got a fountain pen. That's something you got to do versus a, a ballpoint, which is throw away parts and replace them or just chuck it right in the trash. So as far as taking a Parker apart, it's not too crazy. Um, but to really start taking it apart, it's quite a bit more. To clean it, it's fine. You just put it in. Um, you just keep pumping the diaphragm on this guy and, until it's clean. And then you can just, you know, whip the ink, whip, uh, sorry, shake the pen a bit to get the rest of the water out. Maybe take a little paper towel or cloth and just let some of the water wick out. Um, but if you really want to start getting into it and really take it apart, you know, these typically use some adhesives like shellac and stuff like that to really start to get in there. Um, a lot of times you just got to maybe soak it in hot water and then you can take it apart. The parts, the, uh, the internals, the parts of the pen are very easy to work with. Um, but it is a little bit trickier too, even if you have a different filling system, it, it, it's a little bit tricky to take it apart. You can be mindful of things, especially like I said, the adhesives as well. That is an area where I think, uh, the lamb is just a little bit easier. Um, everything is all threads. Um, so again, your section just comes off comes up in the really good threads as well. And another thing too with threads, I like to talk about them. Um, you have uh, similar materials and even when they aren't like as in here, they've done the right type of thread. You can see a nice fine thread, not too coarse, the right pitch and everything. Um, also you can, you have a little ink window, which is handy when you're using the pen, but you have a piston knob here. You can take this out as well. Uh, SBRE Brown has a, a great video on how to do that, so I'm not going to go into it, but you can also grease it. You can see the piston in there. I would actually recommend retracting the piston a bit further. If you are going to grease it, which you should, you have to do over time, is actually retract the piston a little bit more. And whether it's with a little Q-tip, I use a little uh, paper clip, the ones that are coated, uh, not straight metal. They have like a little plastic coating. Put a touch of silicone grease in there, get it on the inside, and that way I get it when I push the piston down, by the time it goes down just a little bit, it's starting to pick up the grease and really get it around everywhere. Versus if you do it with the piston all the way down, you screw it out and do it all the way down, um, you're just getting grease to the front of it. You will still get grease as it slides it up and down, but it might can clog a little bit in there too, and you might have too much grease. So, um, But I just find this pen is a little bit easier to service. Um, so I'll, that's where I'll just give it to that on the Lamy. The next one is like style and design. Now this one is completely subjective, highly subjective for that matter. Um, but let's just dive into it. Let's, I'll give you my take on it. So if we look at the 51, um, right away, there's probably, you know, for some folks, there's going to be some emotional side to it. Uh, bring back fond memories because this pen will take them back to, you know, earlier years in their life when this was a new pen, right? Or, or this was their first pen or something like that. Um, so I can see it kind of, you know, just like my first car where I was very fortunate was a 1968 Camaro. Uh, anytime I see a, a first generation Camaro brings me back to those days, right? So there's always that side of the pen as well. But um, if you show this pen to someone who's not big into fountain pens, maybe they don't really know much about this pen. You show them this pen. They, they're probably, people are pretty familiar with Parker. They see this. If you ask them, you know, when do you think this pen was made? What era do you think this is from? You know, you probably a pretty common answer would be from the 50s or 60s or something like that. Um, and they're, you know, they're fairly close. If you look at the Lamy 2000, again, you might prefer this styling over this or vice versa. Um, if you ask anyone, whenever they first came out in 1966 and they saw this, they went, wow, that looks sharp. Um, if you ask someone 20 years later in 1986 when they thought this pen design came out, they would say just recently. <laughs> If you asked them 20 years later in 2006, you would get the same answer. And today in 2021, 
you would think this is just like a brand new pen that just newly designed, maybe just came out in the last year or two kind of thing that it's, it's a new pen design. Um, but it's been around since 1966. I, I've heard it say that it's been, it's in the Smithsonian for its design because it is timeless. It's such a, a fantastic design that went into this. I could believe that. I was just trying to find out and just research it a bit and see where I could find it says in the Smithsonian if this pen is on display. I couldn't find that. You know, I didn't spend a bunch of time on there, but I've heard it a whole bunch of times. Don't know 100% sure if that's true still today, but I would just give it to the Lamy on that one for the design, just for the example I gave you is at any time during this pen existence, if you ask someone when they thought this pen was made or designed, they would think the answer is just recently. Next up is filling system. Neither of them are your classic cartridge converter pens, which we see almost everywhere all the time. Again, this is one of the options. There's uh, this Aerometric and there's also a Vacumatic. So again, no cartridge converter option going on with this one here. You just press this bar and it uh, pushes ink in or out of the sack to, to, to draw ink in or, or shoot it out as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, this will have to be resacked over time. You do have to be a little more conscious of the inks. Uh, to ensure they're not going to react with that as well. Uh, the Vacumatic has a diaphragm with a little plunger in the back that you push down. I actually I have one. I'm just in the process of restoring it. I found a great deal in one. So again, same thing. It's got a diaphragm which can uh, corrode and, and sort of rot out over time as well. But again, not a cartridge converter. Lamy 2000, as you know, this is the piston filler system as well. It's got an ink window. It's a great piston filler system, nice and smooth, easy to service, easy to clean. Um, you know, again, the tolerance is that knob. It blows me away. I, I look at it every time. It's like, where did it go? Oh, there it is. So it's just such a great job they do in that as well. So, um, I, you know, again, I don't think there's a winner or a loser in that one. The less moving parts you have on things, typically the better. Um, so I'd probably think this is a little bit better of a filling system than the Vacumatic, and there's really nothing to go wrong, but you do have to change the sack over time. Um, yeah, you do have uh, some thread in, in here and moving parts, and you know, you got to grease things a bit too, but it's also very well made if, if you just keep up with regular maintenance as well. Uh, I, I don't think you're going to have many issues with this filling system either. So as far as filling systems, I think they're both really good. Next one is a super important part with a pen, which is reliability. Um, nothing worse than a pen that just doesn't work very often or has a lot of issues. I haven't had any issues with either one of these pens. This guy, this 51, just seems to write all the time, no matter what's going on. Even if there's like literally no ink in the pen, somehow it just writes. It's fantastic. It's just, this is a workhorse. As I mentioned once before, this would be like your military issue fountain pen if there was ever such a thing because it's just not going to go wrong. The Lamy is the same way. I haven't had one issue ever. It writes wonderfully all the time. I do get sometimes a little bit of condensation uh, on the nib there inside the cap. You know, it's a bit of a climate thing. I'm Pacific Northwest here in Canada, and uh, very humid and rainy here a lot, so I guarantee that has a bit to do with it too. But other than that, in the Lamy, you haven't had any issues whatsoever, and same thing for the 51. So next up, this is probably the most important part with any pen, which is how does it write? So this Parker 51 writes wonderfully every single time. Um, never had an issue with it. This isn't even the gold nib, nib. This is the Octavian. This writes wonderfully. It's very smooth, perfect amount of feedback. Um, wetness is spot on as well. The nib is wonderfully tuned after all these years. This pen has been around a long, long time. It just writes and it does a fantastic job of it. Uh, so this writes wonderfully. I tried a, a Forte, uh, not Forte, I guess it was a 12K, I believe they use um, nib. I, there was the gentleman I bought them from, had a few of these lined up and just said, try them, whichever one you like is yours. And I actually preferred, this was just, you know, each nib is a little bit different, but I like this nib the best out of all of them. And also the color combo too was a big decision, me, me buying that one. If we do the Lamy 2000, um, Again, this is probably, actually, yeah, this is my um, my smoothest extra fine. So even for an extra fine or typically scratchy, um, this is a very smooth extra fine nib. Wetness is great as well. You know, it just lays down a right amount of ink. Same thing. This one is tuned really well. Um, 
And there's also more nib options to play with too. You know, extra fine is not overly exciting. Only thing I could maybe say on uh, the Lamy is people talk a little bit about of a smaller sweet spot. And I agree with that. I've never had an issue with it. It's just for, I put it in. I know not to write with it like this or this, like, you know, just put it in. I don't have a problem. Although I do have a friend who wanted to get one, but he's a lefty. And, you know, sometimes you have a little more challenges with certain pens. And this one, he just couldn't get, no matter what he did, it just, he couldn't get that right sweet spot being a lefty. So maybe uh, for lefties, have a little more trouble with this one versus the Parker 51. If you're a lefty and can comment on that, please do. But other than that, maybe potential anomaly, they're both absolutely fantastic they write super well so is their conclusion on which is the better pen or if you could only have one which which one would you have the answer on that one is absolutely not um they're both fantastic i don't know if you could ever really come up with a winner in this one the reason i did this one is just i just you know, was looking at them i was swapping between the two and i thought these are like actually very comparable pen as just as far as size and dimensions like length is pretty close they're both you know could be called vintage pens just because this is the vintage design this is new obviously but they the design has been around for a very long time they're both old um, both have hooded nibs you know um, also too you know as far as the grip section they both taper down as well again same length they you know neither one of them are cartridge converters they both have this little this one has a ring this one has these little ears these little tabs to catch the clip uh, sorry to catch the cap on there as well and have a satisfying you know little perfect amount there i think the lamy one's a little more satisfying but that's just personal preference but uh yeah if you can only have one which would it be well i have both of them so there's the answer there uh, and that's just really up to you on personal preference. So like I said, there's a bit of a nostalgia that comes with this one. I find more than this guy, but they're both fantastic pens. If you're able to, you know, add both to your collection, I would definitely recommend it. If you could only have one of them, you got to make that choice yourself as well. But I appreciate you watching and me trying to tackle this, uh, this topic. I thought it was a big one. Um, but anyways, <laughs> Give comments because there'll be a ton and there's so much information I don't know about both pens, but especially this pen. So I'm sure people will put their their thoughts and ideas and comments on that one. I encourage you to as well. Correct me if I'm wrong in areas, which I know I am, and I know you will correct me. But I hope you have a good time watching this one. Maybe you found some value or, or interesting insight on that as well. Uh, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.